Moscow, live to Moscow. And Vladimir Mateus, he is uh, managing director of Goltz Partners Russia. So thanks very much for joining us, Vladimir. Good morning. Uh, so, Good morning. do you think we are actually going to see a significant increase in the amount of oil that Russia exports to China because of this new pipeline? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, this pipeline is basically having twofold uh, uh, goals. Uh, the one is just to open the window uh, to the Asian Pacific region, and the second, or now we are talking about the first, uh, in this respect, is uh, to supply to China. Uh, the uh, East Siberian pipeline is uh, a source of diversification for Russian uh, crude oil supplies uh, and diversification from European direction and dependency on European bias. Uh, therefore, we do expect that uh, the pipeline will be running and increasing its capacity. Uh, and also, the one of the branch of the pipeline is going directly to China. Russia has some concerns about supplying only to China because they don't want to be dependent too much on China. But uh, again, up to 30 million tons will be going from crude oil from Russia will be going to China. Now, Vladimir, at the moment, Russia actually only provides about 5% of the oil that China imports. That's significantly less than, say, Saudi Arabia. Yes, of course. Saudi Arabia is, uh, or Arabian countries, I would say, supplying to uh, Asian Pacific region up to 70 percent of oil and uh, Russia which is lying with its uh, huge vast resources oil and gas resources in East Siberia in uh, um, West Siberia they are supplying just five to six percent this is a clear disbalance Russia does want to supply more to China and both countries they need each other desperately. Uh, Russia has an uh, export market, uh, China is an export market, and uh, China would like to supply finished goods to Russia. And here lies the uh, sign of Russian dilemma. Russia doesn't want to be a pure commodity supplier to China, and uh, China would like to refine all the Russian commodities in China. So here's the game between Russia and China, who will be, let's say, uh, finishing, uh, producing finishing goods, finished goods, uh, Russia right. uh, with uh, its refineries or, or, or China. Now, Vladimir, just tell us more about Russia's motivations here. Why is it not happy just being a raw materials supplier to China? Is it concerned that perhaps it could lose some political importance if it just simply uh, supplies these raw materials? Yes, uh, it has a clear uh, economic and political uh, motivation. Uh, economically speaking, uh, the value creation chain uh, in uh, commodities to finished goods, Russia understands that it has now the low, low level uh, being just a pure commodity or energy supplier uh, to China, while China has uh, modernized its economy uh, during the last uh, 20 to 25 years and is producing uh, finished goods, uh, being in the upper, uh, upper scale of the value creation. Um, and th therefore, Russia doesn't want to have Chinese players uh, very strong, let's say, in the uh, production of uh, commodities of uh, oil and gas and mining in Russia, but it does want to export Russian commodities uh, to China, but not only commodities, but finished goods to China, being, for example, not just crude oil, but petrochemical products. Got it. Vladimir Mateus, thank you very much for joining us this morning.